Coming up on this episode of DL Weekly, dining packages will be available for Fantasmic. Celebrate Soulfully is coming back soon, a new addition to the Opera House. A new dining option for larger families, new Avengers Campus editions, we talk about our upcoming trip, and more. DL Weekly starts now. Ah, oh, buenos dias, señorita. My siestas are getting shorter and shorter. Oh, look at all the people listening. Welcome to DL Weekly's Enchanted Podcast. Hey, Tag and Teresa, mi amigos, pay attention, it's show time. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of DL Weekly for the week of May 11th, 2022. I'm Teresa Urban. And I'm Tag Bushman. We'd like to thank all of the current weekly tiers for supporting the show. Without your support, DL Weekly would not be possible. Your support ensures that the podcast will continue and that we can make it to the parks more often to bring you the latest news and information from the parks. If you'd like to become an official weekly tier, head on over to dlweekly.net slash support to sign up. It's that time again for our friend Eric over at Concierge to catch us up on other Disney news. Hello, everyone. This is Eric Johnson with Concy Ears, and welcome to the D180. While Teg and Teresa cover all things Disneyland, in the D180, we take a spin around the rest of the Disney universe, and we do it in 180 seconds. Let's jump right in. We begin our adventure this week in the Walt Disney World Resort, where Epcot's renovation continues. Newly posted art shows off the concept for the central neighborhood of World Celebration. The area will feature something we've never really seen in the area, ample shade and plant life. Huh. Multiple gardens will change throughout the year to match festival seasons. The central planter will be surrounded by Epcot's iconic five ring logo. The logo will be part of an elaborate light show that plays each night. The other component of said light show is a returning favorite, lit pavement. Now hold your enthusiasm for a minute. This is a super exciting tribute. In case you didn't know, for many years, the pavement in this area had colorful fiber optics embedded in the pavement. At night, the walkway would come alive with multicolored movement. It was a super fun way to end your night, walking towards Spaceship Earth with the lights twinkling underfoot. The new pavement will take advantage of more advanced technology, bringing back some of that old-fashioned magic with new flair. Another homage to the past is the Communicore Plaza. Communicore East and West opened with Epcot Center and hosted multiple exhibits with the coolest technology the early 80s had to offer. The new plaza will have multiple stages for live exhibits and performances with plenty of seating and shade. Did I mention the shade at Epcot? What a concept. We also received more news about Magic Band Plus. If you ever enjoyed opening your hotel room, entering the parks, or making purchases with your classic Magic Bands, you'll love the upgraded versions coming this summer. The new bands will help you interact with statues around the park and nighttime spectaculars. You can also interact with more of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. While you progress on your missions, your Magic Band Plus will light up and vibrate to help you on your way. No word on cost yet, but this looks like a fun new way to get more out of our Disney parks without jamming your face in a phone. Let's head eastward to Disneyland Paris. The 30th anniversary of the resort is underway and Disney is still uncovering surprises. Just recently, they gave a unique experience to 30 special people. Some of these guests were cast members that have been with the park since it opened. Some won service awards. Some have been dedicated volunteers. Yes, spelled the right way with ears in all caps. And some were just lucky guests. These lucky few gathered in the park for a fine meal at Waltz, an American-themed restaurant, before they watched the new Disney Delight drone show and the full Disney Illuminations nighttime spectacular. Disney has done this sort of thing before, though. These guests got something a little bit more special. The entire crew boarded a bus and took the 30 mile drive, oh, it's France, so it's uh, 48 kilometers, to the Eiffel Tower. Minnie Mouse greeted the crew and ushered them to a special stage set up in front of the iconic tower. He put on a show for his honored guests, dancing and choreographing a light show behind him. In the finale, the Eiffel Tower came to life with the purples and blues of the resort's 30th anniversary celebration. Presumably, Disney also drove them back to the resort afterward. And that's 180 seconds. I hope you enjoyed our quick spin around the rest of the Disney universe. If you would like to learn more about these Disney adventures or just have a few questions, please come on over. Visit the social media and websites of both DL Weekly and us, their official travel planners, Concierge. We look forward to planning something special for you and your family. 
I'm Eric Johnson, and this has been your D180. Well, thank you, Eric, for getting us all caught up. I feel like we have a lot of news just for Disneyland. It's crazy that it's that times however many other thing. I mean, it's so much news, so much. So thank you, Eric. Uh, speaking of news, calling all weekly tears, we are be we will be hosting a mini attraction meetup at Disneyland on Thursday, May twelfth at two p.m. at the Mark Twain. Just meet us at the Mark Twain loading area at two p.m. and we'll take a fun trip around the rivers of America together. I'm really looking forward to this. I feel like the rivers of America are just they're just so calm and relaxing, and I think this will be a really fun, different way to do a meetup instead of just hanging out at like a restaurant or somewhere in downtown Disney because we can actually enjoy Disneyland together. We Mm -hmm. did do a small attraction meetup back for our December trip. That was a little last minute, though. Mm -hmm. Um, So we weren't able to kind of broadcast and let everyone know about it ahead of time. Uh, But we did Small World Holiday. Now, while that was fun... It's not very you could we could chat while we waited for the attraction. But once you're on the attraction, you know, we weren't really able to to chat. So I think this will be really fun. I think so, too. Now let's get to the news. Fantasmic Dining Package fans unite! Dining packages are available for the return of Fantasmic later this month. However, the Blue Bayou is not included now since it is down for refurbishment at the moment. Guests can still get a good meal and a great seat by booking a dining package at the Riverbell Terrace. The premium package is $75 per adult, $45 per child, and includes anything off their normal menu or choice of special items, which include loaded potato bites, petite New York steak and scallops, chicken and dumpling skillet, pan roasted shrimp, chocolate Rocky Road cake, or white chocolate raspberry trifle. Whoo! This allows guests to stay and watch Fantasmic from the patio. The standard package is fifty dollars per adult and thirty per child for lunch or dinner, whichever comes with a voucher for seating in a reserved area for the show. This is interesting to me. So, if you do the seventy-five dollar one, it's a seven thirty a po- like time that you have to yeah. be there for it. You can pick from the regular menu, like Teresa mm-hmm. said, or this these special things or if you don't want to be locked down to that 7 30 kind of time frame and you don't care about sitting on the patio uh you can book a lunch or a dinner for 50 dollars or 30 dollars per child and you can go into the, like the regular reserve seating area and again you can pick from the regular menu or from these special items so it's pretty cool you just have to let your host know when they when you check in that you want either the premium package or the standard package. Sure, that way they know. That makes sense. That way they know what which which direction to go for you. I you know, it'd be interesting. One of these days, one of these trips, we'll have to try the premium package because I think it'd be interesting to watch Fantasmic from their patio there. I've heard it's a good spot to watch it from. Yeah, I've for for wedding stuff, so this is like Related, but off topic related for for weddings pre pandemic. We looked. This was an option. It isn't currently an option, but they had you could do just you and your guests could go in just to do special viewings of things like Fantasmic. So we actually had looked into it. Um, Clearly much reduced rate. It wasn't the same like you didn't have to buy a park ticket per person. It was reduced rate. I don't remember what it was per person, like what what the dollar amount was off offhand. But this, you had a specific viewing area that your guests and you would be at. And I want to say it was actually the patio here at Riverbell. I was oh, cool. kind of surprised by that. So I, it makes me, I'm, I'm more aware of it now. So I'm more curious to see what it's like to watch Fantasmic from there. I also wanted to mention there is a Fantasmic on the go package that you can get from Hungry Bear. This sounds really interesting because... It's less expensive, 35 for adults, 25 for children, but it you actually kind of get like down home menu created just for the event, but you get to take it with you. So I've seen some people take these meals and actually eat them in the reserved seating area for this. Sure. You can eat it, you know, kind of like almost like a picnic or something. Oh yeah. So that would be kind of an interesting way to do it too. This I feel like they had they had this pre-pandemic. Yeah. But I feel like it was a newer offering pre-pandemic. Yeah. It wasn't like 
Blue Bayou and Riverbell that had been around forever. So that is also coming back. I'm still waiting for the Blue Bayou to come back because oh, yeah. uh, I loved Blue Bayou. I don't know. This sounds good. So the things that you can choose from for Hungry Bear are barbecued pork ribs, grilled salmon salad, or a barbecued half chicken served with bacon potato salad, seasonal vegetables, and a dessert with a fountain beverage. Or you can try plant-based impossible sloppy joe sandwich with seasonal vegetables, fruit, dessert, and a fountain beverage. We talk about it later. I know. But the review of that bacon potato salad. I know. I'm so excited. It was such a ridiculous thing to put in the news. You guys will have to just wait and find out more. Well, fans of Celebrate Soulfully from this past February will be delighted to hear that they won't have to wait until the next February for more fun and celebration. This summer, the event returns to highlight Black Music Month throughout June. Daily live entertainment, specialty offerings, including food and art, will be available throughout the resort. The first show to return to the Fantasyland Theater will premiere on May 28th with the return of The Tale of the Lion King. There is so much planned for this. Be sure to visit the link in our show notes for all of the information. I was really surprised about this because we knew that Tale of the Lion King was coming back and we knew that it was going to be at the or going to the Fantasyland Theater. Excuse me. But this is the first time that I have seen any concept art for Mm -hmm. it. It looks it looks fun. It looks really cool. I'm looking forward to it. And this is the first that I've heard of a date. So I was actually surprised that May 28th was when it was coming back. So um, that seems you know, as as from when they announced it to when it's here, that's like 21 days or no, 19 days. So crazy, crazy. Very excited about it. But the cool thing is it's yes, it's the same story. It's kind of the same show as what we had over in DCA, but they've they've plussed it. Right. That's what Disney does. Um, so there's there's a little bit different. It's not the exact same show. It is different. Um I'm very excited. The other cool thing, too, is the Troubadour Tavern, which is back there, will return with new menu items, also oh, cool. inspired by the show. That'll be cool. You know, I don't think I've ever eaten back there. I have this weird, I always forget about it, but they have these, like, bloated baked potato things oh. that they serve back there that I've always been curious about, but don't ever remember to try when I'm when I'm at the parks. Or if I'm back there and think about it. We had just eaten, or we're just about to eat. It's never, it never works out. Not one of these days, I'll have to have one of their loaded baked potatoes. Well, a new addition has been added to the inspirational American Heroes area of the Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln attraction on Main Street. A bust and portrait of Frederick Douglass, who helped guide Abraham Lincoln to include ending slavery as part of the Civil War, is now on display near the bust and portrait of Abraham Lincoln in the lobby of the Main Street Opera House. A framed copy of the letter declaring Frederick Douglass as a free man is also on display. This display was added to continue their efforts to update attractions to reflect the rich diversities and stories of our world. So this was cool because they already had uh, like a a portrait and a bust of Abraham Lincoln there. Mm -hmm. They just added this. And I did not know, like, I'm not great with history to begin with, but I did not know his influence with all of this. So uh, this is great that they have this because obviously people like myself will learn more Mm -hmm. because of this. And I think that's really awesome. Well, and the thing is, it it ties in so seamlessly. Like, honestly, I was looking, um, of course, Disney Parks blog had a photo of the new display, which, again, of course, link is in our show notes. Um, But it just ties in so seamlessly that it fits so well and so perfectly that I like it, it doesn't like scream, oh, this this half is new. This half has been here forever to me. Right. I think they did a really, really nice job. And I think it's really cool that in between the two busts and portraits, they kind of tell the story of how these two men are connected. I think that's mm-hmm. really neat. Yeah. And I like the fact that, you know, like he deserves to be celebrated. Oh, I was reading on the Disney Parks blog. They had some history about him and how that he was a slave. He learned to read and write, which was something that wasn't easy for slaves to accomplish. Then he became a really great writer and public speaker. And he settled in Massachusetts with his wife and joined the abolitionist movement. And uh, he had an autobiography that came out and everything. Like, I don't know. I just, it's so inspiring mm-hmm. because there were so, the odds were so <laughs> against him for all of this stuff. And he was able to persevere and go through it. Yeah. And of course, lead to slavery being abolished, which is amazing. Yeah. I, I think think it's cool. And to learn more, the story of the two leaders and their work together is highlighted in the area between the two busts yeah. too. So when we're honestly when we're there this week, I'm making I'm making it a point to go see Lincoln to go check out this new exhibit. Oh yeah, I want to see this it. is really exciting to me. I think it's very cool. Yeah, I want to see the letter 
uh, of his like declaration mm-hmm. of of him mm-hmm. being a free man. That'll be awesome. Well, here we go, Teresa. Your excitement. Families of four now or, have the option. Or just very hungry people. Well, very hungry people, too. <laughs> Fam- I mean, maybe one Vern. Families think, of four or I one Vern. On, on the um on the actual description, it says two to four. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, those would have to be very hungry people yes. look at the pictures. Well, families of four now have the option to eat at the resort for a pretty good deal. Guests can now purchase the family picnic platter at the Paradise Garden Grill at Disney California Adventure for $65. The meal includes a barbecue half chicken, pulled pork and ribs, andouille sausage, poblano mac and cheese, chuck wagon beans, potato salad with bacon, creamy coleslaw, jalapeno cheddar cornbread, pickles and onions, and cherry cheesecake for dessert. It can be ordered in person or through mobile order, but be prepared to wait a little bit because it is a lot of food that they have to prepare. A cr- crazy, crazy amount of food. So the Disney Food Blog had a really good write-up. They tried this. They had a really nice review of all the different pieces of this platter. I I would love to see this in person because I'm trying to like think of somebody trying to carry it. Yeah, carry it around <laughs> and like get to the table. But man, it looks delicious. The I so the things that stood out to me were the ribs, mm-hmm. the potato salad, mm-hmm. the cornbread, and yep. even though they didn't get really good reviews, I'm curious about the the mac. So I looked at this. I'm not a beans person. But the Disney the Disney food blog loved the beans yeah. that had like some bacon and stuff. So maybe I would like taste it, but I'm not like a beans person. They have like half of a chicken on here. A, a big chicken too. The Andouille sausage was also a point of contention for their reviewers. Some of their people that had this liked it and some didn't. The I love potato salad. Mm-hmm. So the potato salad very excited about the cornbread they said was very good, but they missed butter and honey, that they didn't have butter or honey there. Perhaps soon they will come with a side of butter or honey. God, I'm looking at this potato salad, though. The potato salad does look delicious. Oh. Potato salad with bacon. <clears throat> come on. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, poblano mac. That was the other thing. And it's got, like, cornflakes on the top, so it's got a hmm. couple of different textures, too. They didn't have great reviews. They said it was just okay, but for some reason... Sure. It still sounds like something I need to try. Maybe we need to find a couple of friends, because we are not the two super <laughs> hungry people to be able to share this feast between sure. us so we're gonna have to find a couple hungry friends maybe one of these trips to try these because man See, I'm also it looks not a, yummy i'm also not a ribs person well i'll eat the ribs i'll eat the chicken there you go <laughs> and somebody else can have the pulled pork the, and the andouille sausage <laughs> i want to try the andouille sausage the only thing i'm concerned about is i'm not a spicy person mm-hmm. and so i worry that it's because sometimes andouille sausage can be very spicy so. i can't get over this chicken it looks it's really huge. good it looks seasoned well yes yes it does Well, speaking of food, some new seasonal options have come to the Hungry Bear restaurant in Critter Country. This seems weird to me. I don't, whenever things, this isn't new. You know, the Hungry Bear gets different seasonal offerings, typically some form of crazy sugary funnel cake and loaded loaded onion rings, which, yes, are on this menu. But I was really, we're going to have to stop and try these. One one of the days that we're there because I am super You've intrigued. You've already booked all of our food if you're just no, going by this yes. week. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> I'm like, we only have one dining reservation. Thank you, but I see what you're saying. I I I'm very curious. They have a fried green tomato sandwich, which is cornmeal crusted with blistered tomato relish, for say, and mascarpone spread on toasted sourdough with either cuties, french fries, or onion rings for eleven seventy nine. And the other thing that I'm very interested in is the peach. Honey tea slush. Oh, that's a, definitely a Teresa mm. drink. Uh, I, of course, Yum. like the first thing on the list, the cookies and cream funnel cake. All I love you. cookies and cream. Sounds good. It's not too expensive. It's only $9. Mm-mm. Chili cheese fries are good. You know what I need to get this time? There's two things that I need to get. That One, I've Your never had. Roll. I need to get the lobster roll. The other thing I need to get that I haven't had in a really long time is I need to get a chili dog from Award Wieners because I like their chili dogs. Oh. But what happens is they keep coming out with all this good food. <laughs> they do. So they I can't do. go back. And also, we don't talk about it this week, but there's a new sandwich at the Jolly Holiday that you can get with the soup instead of just the grilled I'm cheese. I'm all over this. It's the it's a Bira inspired beer. Okay, I can't. Bira inspired sandwich. What it is looks that? so good. It's like a it's like a pulled pork and you dunk it in this like like an au jus? Like a like a kind of like an au jus, yeah. It's yeah. kind of like a like a soup. It's mm, they've had um 
the one of the the new local Mexican places, the guy, yeah. the place that has just the street tacos, yeah. has the beer tacos. Oh, and, oh so good! Hmm. Like so juicy, so tender, melt in your mouth. Yum! So we'll have to try that too. Oh we'll just goodness. we'll just add it to the list. That's going to be our discussion topic. Tag and Teresa just adding food to the list. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so many good, awesome though. It options. looks good. Well, over in Avengers Campus, there's a new sipper available at the Shawarma Palace. The Doctor Strange Eye of Agamotto sipper is $24.79, which comes with a strap that guests can wear around their neck, just like Doctor Strange himself. For those of you who don't know, the Eye of Agamotto is the amulet that Doctor Strange wears around his neck, kind of like a like a large necklace. Yeah, and it kind of it looks like, well, it looks like an eye. Didn't, didn't he? Didn't <laughs> he? Really... Didn't he hide the time stone in it like during one of the so, movies or something? So it was. So yeah. originally the time stone was kept in it. Okay. And that's if you've seen any of the Doctor Strange movies, um, yeah, the time stone was in it gotcha. originally. Uh I don't I just watched I just watched, rewatched Doctor Strange, and we just yesterday watched Doctor Strange and the Multiverse. Um, and I don't remember what happened because right. As we know, Thanos took the time stone. Well, actually, Doctor Strange gave Thanos the yeah. time stone. Um, he just he he took it out. He like gave it to him. Yeah, he gave it to him because it was it was either the time stone or Tony, and so he saved yeah. Tony and gave. Anyways, so um, spoilers. <laughs> I don't remember what's going on in in the eye now because mm-hmm. it used to glow green because of the time stone. Right. Now it glows yellow, which the sipper does have a yellow sure. hue in the center of it, and so I need to I need to go back and rewatch to figure out. How how it's like the, powered or what sure. what it's what is it normally that it doesn't have the time? Yeah, stone what in it? what is what's what is it holding in there now? So I'm sure weekly tears. I'm sure I'm sure one of you. I'm sure several of you probably know, and you you can take my my Marvel card from me since I don't <laughs> know. But I yeah I don't remember. Hmm. Anyway, so we won't go into any spoilers, but perfect timing since we just had the release of. The new Doctor Strange movie. Mm-hmm. I very much I enjoyed it. It was a very it it like action packed, great like kept me on the edge of my seat. Yeah, Marvel movie. Yeah, I thought it was good. Speaking of the release of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, America Chavez joins the team as well as the return of Wanda Maximoff, also known as the Scarlet Witch. She returns. She's out in her Scarlet Witch form. Both of these characters are now out and about in Avengers Campus. America Chavez can be seen as part of the Doctor Strange show and then with a meet and greet afterwards. The Scarlet Witch makes appearances at a meet and greet in the middle of the land. So she's also been seen like in the Sanctum area as well. But I saw quite a long video where she was kind of where the the Dora Milaje... I'm all my cards going away too. I don't remember <laughs> what they're called, but where they do that kind that of show, show yep. like up on the there's like a mini stage yeah. seating area, whatever. Uh, and I saw her there, and I thought that she looks really good. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I'm excited to see them in person. I think both cast members that they have um, portraying these characters look very, very good. I will say. I'm going to nitpick somebody. I'm sure somebody listening to this will also nitpick if they see America Chavez in the, in Avengers campus, her pin does not match the pin she had in the movie. Oh, it doesn't? So she has a rainbow pin on in the park. In the movie, she had the rainbow pin that also had the Chevron for, she doesn't have the Chevron in the park. So I don't know if they like change that and I don't know. Hmm. So, like, what I mean by change that is I don't think they're trying to, like, go backwards right, with it. Right, right, right. I'm just thinking when they were coming up with the costume, maybe oh, it was a previous version right. and they decided to add the the trans one. So, yeah, I if you look... I thought I saw that she had the trans... No, she did in the movie, the but she she- didn't... The Chevron in one of the, one of the many, 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 many photos that... There it is. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So I was like, hmm, because... Being somebody who's a member of the community, I feel like I, anytime there's like a rainbow something, for some reason, I just am drawn to it. I see it. So in the movie, when she had that, I was like, oh, that's cool and inclusive. Then when I saw these pictures, I was like, wait a minute, that's different. So otherwise, you've got an eagle eye, man, because that is a good job for you. Well, we, as we've been following for the last few episodes, changes are finally visible for the treehouse in Adventureland. The rope bridge that guests crossed over the path to enter the attraction has been taken down, and the tree in the middle of the path, which housed the stairs 
to the bridge has also began to be dismantled. Still no word from Disney on what the retheme for this former Tarzan's treehouse and before that Swiss Family Robinson treehouse will be. This I'm still just this just makes me sad. <laughs> I just I liked the bridge. I it, it brought some kinetic, you know, kinetic movement to the park which is the people moving around and across it. So I'm I'm a little I'm a little nervous as to what this is going to look like when it's finished. I I'm not I can't I can't judge it yet cuz we have no idea, but it just feels like it's going to be just this big vast open area which is part of my hesitation with New Orleans Square which we will either confirm or not when we're there this week. I'm just worried that these areas that used to be have all this like charm. Yeah is getting taken away so that there's more space. I understand sure. space, is, space is important. I under, I 100% understand that, but I just don't want to lose the character and charm of the area. Uh, my chat for their article this week posted a video of like a different walk around than what we had seen in the past. And that area seems even more big and expansive now than the video we had seen that... For New Orleans Square. Yeah, like that area seems very open. I'm still trying to figure out because my brain is not processing this at all. I'm trying to figure out, because part of this supposedly is to help with the pirate's queue. And I, don't, I just yeah. don't understand how this works. However, Disney is doing something in Florida, which I've been saying for a long time. So their new Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind mm -hmm. attraction is only virtual yeah. queue. Yeah. So I was like, that's what they should do for pirates, because that would get rid of their whole problem with the lines and the queues I and just, everything in there. I, but again... It doesn't seem like it's it's always, and maybe it's because they're having issues with the attraction, hence why it's down for refurbishment. It they didn't they weren't utilizing the full queue space most well, of the time yeah. when it was overflowing out into everywhere. Yeah. So because it used to just kind of back up into like just that front area. Yeah. Very rarely did it go way over like, like it has recently. Like you could yeah. almost get a beignet as you were standing in line. <laughs> For pirates, that that was a more recent thing, and that only seemed and it seemed to always coincide with when they didn't have both of those queues open. Sure. So that was a ton of space that wasn't getting you know just emptied and not utilized. So I know we're it'll be interesting going way off track here, but you mentioned the uh, mint julep bar there. Or, mm -hmm. um, that also has like a line problem the last few times we've been there. Yeah. Like that stretches back into yeah. the whole area. They do have that area, which was interesting. Um, they have blocked off that section of Royal Street yeah. where the Club 33 is and they're painting mm -hmm. but somebody said they just repainted this recently so like what's changing I'm I'm fascinated that things I'm might be different curious if it has something to do with the storefront oh that is next to the blue that's next to Blue Bayou is it the one that everybody was thinking was going to be Tiana's restaurant or yeah whatever? that thought it was going to be a restaurant I think it's going to be I think it's I do think it's going to be Princess and the Frog themed, but I think it might be like cooking or something oh, yeah. like, you know, like, like a Disney home. Store yeah, kind like of a thing. Disney home store kind of thing where you can get um, like cooking stuff that you would use in your kitchen cooking. Yeah. Kind of stuff, because um, that's just not unless unless. Um, oh, 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 uh oh, we may have just solved two problems. OK. You were just complaining about the line for beignets. Yeah. The problem with the line with the mint julep bar is it's it, it, there's what like one window that they like. Yeah. It, there's one place to order. And oh, are like you one saying place. that like they'll do beignets over there? What if they there? did beignets over there? I mean, that would be super cool. That would be super. That would still go in line with our Tiana theme, and it would just be like a walk up, but you have multiple windows. So would you say leave the mint julep at the mint julep bar, but move the beignets? You could to the. Mm. You could. Mm. Ooh, what do I win if I'm right? We need to come up with a name <laughs> of like, uh, like, like speculation. Ooh. Anyway. Ooh, I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. You could use it, Disney. It's fine. Mm -hmm, you can. Last week was May the 4th when Star Wars fans have a day of celebration for the universe that they know and love. Disneyland had two of their Star Wars night after hour parties with one more to come up on May 27th later this month. Fans that attended seemed to have a really great time dressing up, watching the special fireworks show for the event, checking out all of the photo locations and meeting up with characters throughout the park. Some of the highlights were the fireworks show and the cantina band on the Rivers of America playing Star Wars classes oh my god i the would emperor die too was another big thing that was a 
like surprise that the emperor and Darth made Maul an was around he was, again. He was too. A surpri- yeah, he was a surprise. Yeah. So Cantina Band. That was so fun. I would be all about this. I did see so some fun. people complaining in the comments of this My Chat article that they were like, oh, Star Wars is too many places all over Disneyland. And they're like, uh, it was a Star Wars event. So yeah, yeah. just wanted to put oh. that out there. But Cantina Band, mm-hmm. like before Fantasmic, they, uh, bef- before the performance of Fantasmic, they would have like a band come back and forth while everybody was like sitting and yeah. waiting kind of prior. So it was kind of like that. But with the Cantina Band, I thought that would have been so cool. They've had the Cadaver Dans on it for yep. like Halloween parties that yep. they don't do anymore. But loved it. Fireworks show looked good. James watched the fireworks show. James and I still think, for whatever reason, the fireworks show that they had in Hollywood Studios in Florida for Star Wars was really good. Yeah, that was good. But this one was also pretty good. You know, though, but this is what I thought about it. This... They had a, a special fireworks show for a, an event that's only three nights. So I yeah. thought that was pretty cool. So I was watching Ordinary Adventures and they kind of speculated, you know, maybe since this short, quote, you know, in, in all schemes, whatever, grand realm, scheme. grand scheme of things, short event had a dedicated nighttime show. Yeah. The only other thing that we know, like that I can think of off the top of my head that has a dedicated nighttime show is the Oogie Boogie Bash, which lasts. That's also like, most of night, a lot of. But nights. but it lasts what like a month, month and a yeah. half. It's it's a very long event, so it makes sense to have something a dedicated show for that. Um, so they were they were hoping that maybe down the line, Star Wars Night doesn't evolve and get bigger, and it's mm. just a celebration through like throughout, throughout May or May. whatever. And so yeah, so maybe this is just kind of the beginning, which would be pretty cool. I will say. The score to Star Wars lends itself oh, very well to fireworks. Yes, yes. Very well. Epic. Just very epic movie. So one of the things that I want to talk about, we'll get into some more of this later, was some of the photo ops that they had. A lot of these photo ops were event specific. Um, the coolest one mm-hmm. that I saw was um, Jabba. Jabba the Hutt. And it was it wasn't like you just went and stood next to this cutout because sometimes it's just like this really cool thing that you're standing in front. Oh no no no, three D job of the hut. <laughs> so you could go stand next to his sliminess and get your photo That's taken. Cool, it was a really cool looking photo op. They had some other ones that um, were kind of like a forced perspective thing, so it looked like you were maybe about to fall in the. I think it was the Sarlacc pit. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they had a lot of really neat ones because that was like that was like the well, a thing that you wanted to get the picture of, right? With the cake and stuff, yeah. it was forced yeah, perspective. Yeah, yeah. I do like that. I think that's really cool. Yeah, they I, like Star Wars night. They just knocked it out of the park. I think they did an amazing job. So good for them. I, you know, this might be sacrilege, especially for me. This looked like it was a lot, a lot more fun than I'm sorry to say. Villains' night was. There just seemed to be so much going on. There was tons of food options. Everyone that, like the videos that I watched, like Ordinary Adventures even said this. They're like, we wish we would have been here t- like two nights because right. there was just so much going on that they were doing one what they thought cool thing, and then they'd hear about, oh, you just missed this other super cool thing. So. Yeah, tons and tons going on, which I think is really, really fun. And I think what that's makes good for these... a night, though. Oh, yeah, that's what makes these events special. Yeah. And worthwhile. Well, some of the photo locations that were offered for Star Wars Night are also there during normal park hours for pictures. Over by the Star Wars Launch Bay in Tomorrowland, there's a Disney Visa cardholder exclusive location from the Book of Boba Fett. Other photo locations were scattered around Tomorrowland for all the guests. Is this the same one that was in Downtown Disney? That is the same one, I believe, that was in Downtown Disney. But the one that I was more excited about was this one here. So, again, we have the link in the show notes for the Mice Chat article that has these photos. But this was from, this is from the Mandalorian. Grogu's walk. Mind. Rock. That's Wasn't it. That I was going to say, I remember like Grogu sat on it, but I don't, I'm a really bad person. I don't remember at what point in like in the journey. It was the in the journey. newest season and he was sitting on the rock uh, when Luke uh, was teaching that's stuff. That's right. That's right. That's right. But yeah, very cool. Scott, I think that'd be, I think they should. I think that it'd be super popular. These have all sold out, so we know people. There's a like a a want for it. That's well, it. That's well, it. heck, I mean, if it was still going on when we were there, we probably would have gotten tickets oh, for yeah. it. Especially, I mean, they would be sold out by now. But like, but they sold out. I feel like if you have something that sells out, you should add more nights to mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I feel like they could have added more nights. 
Because like, especially since it was spread out throughout yeah. the month. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it will be in the future. Maybe Ordinary Adventures is right. It'll be it'll be Star Wars month. Yes. I mean, why not? Why not? With how much time and energy it takes to create these special event nights, yeah. you may as well do it more than just a couple of times. I feel like too. As the years go on, we've seen this with Oogie Boogie Bash and stuff too. I feel like as time goes on, it becomes like cheaper to put it on because like you've invested a lot in the sure, beginning. Yeah, yeah. But then each year you can add like a couple little mm-hmm. things to keep it like new and fresh, but it's not like a huge outlay. Yeah, it's not like, that first initial investment. Like Oogie every Boogie year. Bash, they have all of the stuff to do. Right. I mean, they obviously have to have the villains Mm -hmm. but like the villains the villains grove they already have all that technology and equipment they just need to install it Mm -hmm. and so you know that's kind of cool for visitors to the resort that are not in the parks there are still some star wars things to check out outside the star wars trading post in downtown disney there is a sand sculpture to promote the upcoming obi-wan disney plus series in addition there is a lego display outside of the lego store featuring captain phasma kylo ren and a sith trooper all made of lego there is also a massive lego yoda on display nearby as in like He's Huge. bigger than Captain Phasma and Kylo Ren. Massive, mm-hmm. like giant, giant Yoda. <laughs> I love like the the Lego sculptures and stuff. Also, yeah. I'm hoping that this sand thing is still there when we're there because all it would take is like one good rainstorm. I know. But I can't imagine. Look at all the detail on this thing too. Like I'm, it's just crazy. Yeah, the thing too, because so my chat, of course, has photos. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think like where this big pit. That they filled in with sand is oh it's kind of over to the left of it okay. yeah yeah i don't rem- there had to have been something there before i genuinely don't remember oh this this looks like it was the same area that had the that had the ray's little thing from jakku pretty cool very cool well this week for our discussion topic we are talking about of course our upcoming trip that we will be going on uh, as you guys listen to this we will be in the parks for Wednesday evening, Thursday, and Friday. And just so you guys know, uh, in case you listen to this in the future, that is going to be May 11th, 12th, and 13th of 2022. On the 14th and 15th, we'll be at the Disney Anna uh, show where they have, like, I want to say it's like, for us, it's a -a once-in-a-lifetime situation. They've got Bob Gert. They've got Kim Irvine. They've got, uh, like, it's just going to be amazing because they're going to have a whole presentation, everything. It's just amazing. So... Uh, we're going to be doing that, and then we're going to do the show and sale on Sunday morning, and then we fly home. So it's going to be a very quick trip. But packed, wow. Packed full of packed. so much fun. So let's start with park stuff that we're excited about, since that's the first half of our trip is park stuff. I, of course, am very excited to see the Main Street Electoral Parade again. I'm also excited to check out Fantasy Fair, like that theater over there, to check out the little shows that they've got going on there as well. And as we've already discussed, oh, of course, World of Color. I was sorry, I was focusing just on Disneyland. (laughs) Um, World of Color, we do have a dining package for World of Color. um, So that I'm excited because that's too, it's like, Right, we get to see World of Color again, but we're also eating at Storytellers, which that will be my first time. Me too. At Storytellers. So, what day is that? That's Thursday. Oh, okay. So, I'm very, yeah, I'm excited to check out Storytellers. Sure. I, I have high expectations because the all of the wedding food that we had was f- just phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And that was all provided by the Grand Californian oh. Hotel. So I am going in really excited to Storytellers, hoping that we get some of those same flavors. And it's a buffet. And it's a buffet. Yeah. So I watched some reviews on this, and they just have like a ton of different oh. options. I mean, buffets are great. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not going to help me with my with my uh, try to eat better <laughs> journey. But, we'll just uh, have to walk a, a few more laps around. The sure, park. sure. <laughs> Uh, but like I said, I, I think the food looks really good. I really like the fact that Storytellers is involved in a dining package. Mm-hmm. So you can go like they expand the options because I feel like for a long time when you wanted to do like a dining package somewhere, it was like the same places over and over. It was like Plaza Inn yeah. and Blue Bayou and Riverbell Terrace mm-hmm. and Hungry Bear a little bit. And then in California Venture, it was like Carthay and wine Lamplight Country. and Wine Country. I don't know if they had any dining packages with Lamplight. Didn't I'd be, they have a dining package with uh, Ariel's? But what it was, Ariel's. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But like that was the only real option. So mm-hmm. I like the fact that this is a place we've never been to before. Yeah. So we're excited. It'll be a whole great experience. 
because it'll be a dying package we've never done before at a new location we haven't done before and seeing World of Color in its fresh, freshened up Yeah, I think it'll be neat just because, you know, like you were saying, we've all kind of had the same ones. But what's cool is this is bringing in a location that is, for me, anyways, a little out of sight, out of mind because it's not inside the park. So I kind of forget forget about storytellers which is sad because it sounds like delicious and ever since i've been learning more and more about it it's it, i've wanted to try it out and so i this is just like a perfect a perfect excuse a perfect reason to go because sometimes when i'm in the parks it's very hard for me mentally to think to go out so like yeah. i don't think outside of the park once I'm in the park, if that makes sense. Well, even with Downtown Disney, we do that yeah. same thing. It's like, we want to go eat in Downtown Disney, but we forget. The only time we've s- successfully done it is when we've gone out because we were there and we don't have a reservation or whatever for that day. We did that with yep. uh, Naples. Yep. Um, or we have a situation where we're doing like a meetup and we're like, let's have Earl of Sandwich. Mm-hmm. So... Yes, you're right. Like, this is nice because it will force us to do that on a day that we're in the park mm-hmm. normally. Plus, it's pretty convenient because where you exit yeah. into the Grand California, yeah. it's like right, right there. Right there. Exactly. Um, also, I've I've decided this. Another thing that I'm looking forward to is pin trading, of course. Um, and one of the boards that I found that I really like found some cool stuff on is actually inside the Grand California and in their little gift shop. So this gives me a good excuse to like go go pop out, check out the gift shop, check out the pin board, see if I can find anything. And we get to see the Star Wars thing that you're very excited about in the lobby. Yes, the big Millennium Falcon display. I also want to say that Therese is trying to tempt me into pin trading because last week when we recorded, we went downstairs from the studio and she goes, one of those, one of these is yours, pick one. And I'm like, well, I kind of like this one. She's like, you're not supposed to like it. You're not supposed to like them. (laughs) The one that you feel the least attachment to is the one you need to take. I'll probably do the one with that looks like the skull crossbone kind of thing because those aren't that exciting to me. But those other ones, there's a couple ones that are nice. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I I will do some pin trading this time. I have to remember to bring a lanyard, too, because that's, like, part of the whole thing. Uh, And I got to do like you. Maybe I got to separate, because your big thing is, like, you have, like, sometimes, like, a a Ziploc bag with, like, ones in it. Yep. So, yeah, what I do is I don't wear them because I don't don't put locking backs on them. So I don't. I don't want to lose them. Yeah. So I have the ones I'm keeping are on my lanyard, and the ones to trade are loose in my Ziploc bag. So they're kind of all together, but easily easy enough to grab and swap out. So I am looking forward to pin trading, of course. Uh, the other thing, this is really weird, but we're gonna we're gonna transition <laughs> to food. The oh, other thing geez. I'm excited about, there's not very many cold brews right now, but I am excited to finally try the. Um, Orchata cold brew. Oh yeah, from Rancho this yeah. trip because the Orchata cold brew that I had before was the one that was over in DCA, and apparently they are very they are different. Oh. They are not they are not made the same. And a lot of people have been saying that the one over in Disneyland was better. And yeah. I really enjoyed the one from the Joffrey's cart at DCA. So if it's gonna be better, so if that one's better, and it comes in two sizes, all of the other cold brews is just. Do you want a cold brew? Cool. Here's your size. This one has like one, it's like a a whatever, a regular and a large. So if you want to talk about things like food things that you're excited about, if they, do they still have, I don't know. Does the Lamplight still have the cookies and cream donuts? They do not. They have a different donut. Uh, No, no, I saw the different different donut, donut. but it's not the cookies and cream donut. Because I saw somebody posted online that they, it might have even been in our chat. I can't remember. This has been a very busy week for me. So like my brain's all over the place. But I was like, I will walk up by myself and go in and just order that because (laughs) somebody was saying that you could walk up and if you're just one person, you're likely to kind of get in pretty quick. Yeah. And so I was like, if I could just get in and order the donuts and then leave, (laughs) like I just need to order the donuts. Like you don't have to seat me. Just let me walk up to the bar, order the donuts and I will leave. Now you get the cookies and cream funnel cake instead. Yeah, we'll have to hope that that's as good. I also, what was the beignet? You had the banana beignet banana that you beignets were beignets that I'm interested, interested in. in. Yep. How are we going to have time for all this food? We've got three days. We've got six well, meals. two and a half days, technically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have six, dinner. So six meals. We have three dinners. One is already spoken yep. for. So we've got... Three lunches. Two lunches. Two breakfasts. Oh, yeah, two lunches. Two lunches. Two breakfasts. Two breakfasts. We'll, we'll do it. I have faith. Okay. 
we have to steer away from the Ronto rap situation, though, because I feel yeah, like that's once, taking a once, valuable... Once you have one Ronto rap, you can't... They're so I good. They Their breakfast so good. ones are so... Now, I'm really picky with my eggs and stuff, and they cook them well enough that I'm happy with the Ronto rap breakfast thing. But I also like the sauce that they put on, and I also want to have the ronto list wrap again, because you had that's that. That's yummy. I, I always forget to taste it. Like, I forget to order it, but I've tasted yours, and I'm like, that's so good. Okay, I'm going to start our list. We're okay. starting a list. This is terrible. Well, and then we've got the buffet situation um going on as well so like that'll be but that's dinner so that's that's fine we don't have to worry about like afterwards so is there any um let's see what else are we trying to so we got the 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 banana beignets Mm -hmm. the cookies and cream funnel cake i think will be other my lobster roll i have to prioritize a lobster roll this time that'll be one of our lunches you can get i want to try that fried green tomato sandwich so you can go grab a lobster roll cool so that'll be our like lunch yep, time. That'll be Are our you going to be bouncing around there? Are you going to get? Oh, well, well, I guess your cold brew will probably be a morning thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to go over there and get that in one of the mornings. Oh, we, good. you know, what we need. We Do you know, what we also haven't stuff. even talked about. These oh, are all new stuff. Geez. We forgot that all of the Main Street Electrical Parade food options are also available. We are not. But is there anything that stood out that we were like, oh, we have to have that? The blueberry churro, the parade macaron, bunt cake. Yeah. The I did see the there's like a confetti bunt cake thing or something that I saw a picture of mm-hmm. and I was like that sounds mm-hmm. really good. So we'll have to see. So yeah, we could just go on and on and on in DL, what's the, DL Food Weekly. What's the whole point? So though? the whole pull, the whole reason yep. that we are going out is for the Disney Anna Fan Club event. Like Tag said, there is a collectible show and sale on May fifteenth, but. There's also this really, really cool event the day before on Saturday the 14th. They have this thing called the Disney Anna Fan Club Disney Legends Awards. Not to be confused with like the D23 Expo's Disney Legend Awards. Right. This is a separate thing. And so this year they are honoring a couple of wonderful people. We have Terry Hardin and then also Leota Toombs. But since Leota Toombs has passed away, her daughter, Kim Irvine, will be will be there in as well. So I just I'm very, very excited. And about we've got um we've got uh, what the, Hart, uh, Garner, Garner Holt, Holt, who for those of you who don't know, has his company Garner Holt Productions has made all types of ride systems and stuff for Disney over the years. He does for some other uh, amusement parks and theme parks and stuff as well. But he's also, he's kind of like an Imagineer without being an Imagineer. Like his company does a lot of the ride systems and stuff. Oh, oh, I I read this wrong. I'm sorry. So I thought Kim Irvine was coming to accept the award on her mother's behalf. Okay. That is, while that is true, Kim is getting a an award as oh. well. So there's actually three honorees that are getting awards. Very, very cool. So as we all know, so we'll start with Leota Toombs. Um, she was an artist and imagineer who worked at WED. She worked on several original attractions. Um, most famously though, she's the 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 visual, the she she is Madame Leota. Like yes. when you look at Madame Leota, that is Leota Tombs. That's not her voice, but that is her face. Yes. Um. So she she did work on the Haunted Mansion. She also worked on um, Pirates of the Caribbean was another big one too. Uh. But she yes. Yeah, so she will be represented by her daughter, um, Kim Irvine, who is the other another recipient. So Kim Irvine, I feel like we talk about her all the time because she does all sorts of fun amazing stuff. She's Recently, working on the tree right now. Yeah, she's working on the the retheme of Tarzan's treehouse right now. Prior to that, she worked on um, Snow White's Enchanted Wish. She also worked on the new color for the recent paint job on the castle. So yep. she's very very cool. She just she's she leads a team in Anaheim that's responsible for the the look, the tone and just the feel of Disneyland. So we love Kim Irvine. We love her. And then the third honoree is Terry Hardin. And she is a puppeteer artist and also former Imagineer. Um, but she worked on s- attractions like Star Tours, Splash Mountain, um, Captain EO, Muppet Vision 3D. She also worked in the Dragon's Lair, like worked on the Dragon's Lair in Disneyland Paris. But she does, but she does the pumpkin thing more recently. Yeah. Like she and so, a- yeah. And so we actually talked about her, 
mm, last fall. I don't remember exactly when, but she does this pumpkin carving sculpting masterclass type things. And at this past this past year, it was hosted at a Weekly Tears home. So our friend Stephanie F. actually hosted this, had people come to her home in How Anaheim, cool. and they got to learn par- the pump- the art of pumpkin sculpting That's with so cool. former Imagineer Terry Harden. Which, and these I mean, pumpkins are amazing. Oh, incredible. Absolutely incredible. But who else is going to be there? So, and then we also have just as guest speakers, like Tay already mentioned, Garner Holt, but Bob Gurr is also going to be there. Oh, this is like, so I did not know this. Like, I, I may have subconsciously known this, but I did not know, know this. Bob Gurr is the last yeah. uh, Imagineer who's still alive that worked on the original Disneyland. Yeah. yeah. So just to be in the same, even if we don't talk to him or anything, just being in the same room as this, mm-hmm. Same thing with Kim Irv. I mean, all of these people are going to be are just Incredible. so amazing to to go and see. And it's just, I'm so excited that we got to be able to do this. Um, I do want to send a special thank you to producer James, who is graciously. Uh, we had another thing planned for that weekend, but he graciously uh, allowed me out of it. So I do want to say thank you for that. I also want to say thank you to Teresa for, I mean, I don't really have to because Teresa was also very excited for this, <laughs> but being able to get time off work and everything and make this all happen. So uh, it's going to be a really, really great trip. And and I'm very excited for this. So is there, um, you know this probably better than I do. So is there... Because there's a dinner at night. Yeah. So the morning, the morning is kind of like the presentation. So they're it's going to be kind of like like a panel. They're gonna so the guest speakers are gonna talk and you know oh, perfect talk you know presentation type yeah. things. Um, and then there's there's a break, and then after the break is the dinner and the awards ceremony. Gotcha. Is the evening portion of. This. And then the so, next day very exciting. is what the show and sale, which has just like a ton of Disney things. Yeah. So it's kind of like so think how do I want to say this. Think like an antique place, but for Disney stuff <laughs> or like oh, a craft no. fair kind of thing or what? So there's going to be a presentation with Bob Gurr and then later joining Bob on a panel about Disneyland attractions will be um, Garner Holt with him. Yep. And then um, the third presenter is Terry and Terry's going to be sharing her tales of work on Disneyland Paris in honor of the 30th anniversary. So that goes, so those go from 10 a.m. to about 1.30. I said, oh no, because there's also a silent auction that's going to be held throughout the day, which concludes also at 1.30. Um, a break from then until 6 p.m. so that they can get their room set up for the, the Legends dinner where we will hear about the honorees of the award, and again, those honorees are Terry Harden, Kim Irvine, and Leota Toombs. Right. So then what's Sunday? So then Sunday is the, basically it's like a sale. So I, from what I, so this is our first one, but from what I understand is it's like a collectible show and sale. So if you've been to D23, this is kind of like D23, but on just a a smaller scale. So in D23, you've got all the different panels and presentations. Yeah. But on the expo show floor, there was all sorts of different booths. Yeah. They were like different artists, different people that are authors that you can meet and buy their books and people that sell all sorts of collectibles and pins and you know, okay. any, anything and everything Disney. Think that just on a smaller scale. Um, and so that's at the Double Tree Suites by Hilton on Sunday. I feel like that's going to be dangerous for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, we've already... At that point, we have already we would have already packed our bags. So we, oh, yeah, we can't true. get too crazy because... Yeah, we were already packed. So yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just very excited to to go. Our friends Lynn and Ken from the Sweep Spot are going to be there. They've got a booth that they that they'll be selling their books at. So we're looking forward to oh, bumping yeah. in and saying hi to them. Uh, you know, who knows? We might see other familiar faces oh, while yeah. we're there too. So we're just really excited to check out, see see what there is to see. Hopefully, try very hard not to buy all of the things but we're just <laughs> we're hoping to maybe connect with some people that we've gotten to know through the podcast that yeah. thus far we've only connected you know via zoom or if that may you know maybe it was just audio that we've connected with some yep. of these people so i'm hoping i'm hoping that we get to say hi and put you know 
actually shake some folks hands as well right yeah and it's great that they finally are bringing all these type of events and stuff back oh yeah you know because of this we actually uh both Teresa and i became official disney anna fan club members there's a virtual chapter of the disney anna fan club that would be cool because i think there was also one like in minneapolis or something but i think the virtual one might work better for us just to be able to see a lot more things and so that's very exciting. In fact, right before we recorded this tonight, uh, both of us got our membership We cards. did. We're official. We have our cards. <laughs> oh, great timing. I just noticed this. So clearly we're not going to be taking part of this, but there is a, they're holding their first Disney and a fan club Disney bound contest. So we'll have to go check out the bounders. And when see. are we going to Disney bound? Well, once we plan outfits. Yeah. <laughs> Step one. Plan the outfit. Step two, buy the outfit. Step three, wear the outfit. So profit. <laughs> step one, we gotta we gotta plan this out and figure out what we're gonna do. Man, man, I just think this is gonna be and now. Just like our, just like for for you and Vern's wedding, I feel like we're gonna be doing a lot in a short amount of time. So it's gonna feel crazy. Did we decide? Are we doing genie or anything? Or we haven't even talked about any. Of yeah, that. I don't know. We're gonna be too busy eating all the food. <laughs> We're just not going to go on anything. We're just going to be eating the whole time. We're going to have to be eating and walking to burn off the food. We're the best guests that Disney has. It's like, oh, you're not even going to be utilizing anything. You're just going to come in and spend more money to buy food. Okay. Uh, Well, that's because they have so many amazing. It's just, yeah, they have so many amazing options. You know how much money they would make if there was like a booth? Like if you could go to the newsstand in the Esplanade and be like, I'd like to order some Bengal beef skewers or like uh, 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 horchata or whatever, and they like bring it to the oh. front without even have to go in the park. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, plus the n- nighttime like, stuff is back because yeah. we're going to spend a bunch of time watching the electrical parade yep. and world of color. And too, the fireworks. Fireworks, too bad no Fantasmic yet. I know. We're just That's a little okay. early on that. Next trip, it gives us something to look forward to next trip. I heard a rumor. Well, not a rumor. Let me tell you the not rumor part. So... Disney announced for the Florida Fantasmic that they're replacing the Pocahontas scene oh. with like a bunch of different things. And so they're they're doing some different stuff there, which makes me think, oh, maybe they're replacing some stuff for ours because there's been a rumor for a while that they are replacing the pirate segment really? back to maybe Peter Pan. Because a lot of people, I guess, aren't as happy with the Pirates version of when the Colombian stuff comes out. Uh, but also, I almost wonder if they would be updating anything else to add, like, newer things to it. Because they seem to be doing stuff like that. we get more, like, okay, so... Coco I've, would be great. I don't know how they'd work it in, but yeah, that'd be Yeah, I don't cool. know either. But, um... I, yeah. I just, I want more physical things. So, like... Oh, yeah. I would screens. be very... Yep, I'd be very excited for Peter Pan to come back just because I loved... The TikTok that followed yeah. the TikTok crocodile that followed the boat. I thought that was such a fun little ad, and I really want to see. And maybe, maybe one day we'll talk to someone that can tell us the the reasoning. But Flotsam and Jetsam, I thought that that was a really nice yeah. add to the screen yep. versus just the screen. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, what what? So what do you other than the Disney Anna thing, which I think is like the highlight of this trip for us? What are you most excited for? The electrical parade, probably. Not just I'm going to just lump it all together. Nighttime entertainment. I'm really yeah. excited, and just entertainment in general. Because are we going to see one of the shows? One of the little like Royal Princess yeah. Fantasy Fair yeah. shows? Okay, yeah. I want to both of them because there's two. There's two shows. Yeah, there's Beauty one the that's Beast Beauty and, Tangled, and the Beast, right? and there's one that's Tangled. So I would like to try and catch both of them if we can. So I'm really excited to to check out some of the entertainment that has come back mm-hmm. that we haven't gotten to experience yet. You know who I haven't seen but you saw for your wedding? Like, I want to see the the, the Pearly dance. Band. I oh, want to see the yeah. Dapper Dance. I want to see the, what are the people in New Orleans Square? Oh, the, the bootleggers. The bootleggers. They're, they're super fun. I want to see all of them. Uh, so we'll have to see. I don't know. I just, I think sure. you're right. The entertainment is going to be great. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how many rides. I was giving somebody so much. I was giving Eric on the Hub Crawl, my other podcast, um, some grief because he was one of the. He still has never seen Fantasmic all the way through. Really? Because he uses oh. it as an opportune time to go on all the rides. And I said, you really need to watch Fantasmic all the way see, through. See, I'm the more frequently I go, the bigger a fan I am of this thing that I've accidentally found out. Uh-oh. You go for rope drop, right? Okay. And like the first couple of hours, 
You do attractions. You just walk on attractions, basically, yeah. because it's just the crowds aren't that heavy. Once the crowds start building, sure. that's when I like to t- step away from attractions and really take advantage of and experience and enjoy the entertainment offerings. Mm. And that was missing for a long time. Mm-hmm. So now that that stuff is back. Yep. Yeah. They just need some more entertainment over in DCA now because they need like yeah, a parade back do. or something. They do. But it'll be nice. I'm very, I, so for me, highlight, I think also nighttime entertainment. I'm, I'm excited because I feel like the finale float yes. of the electrical parade. I feel like the videos and the pictures we've seen haven't done it justice. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it'll be gorgeous in person, probably. We do need to watch the electrical parade twice, though, because we got to make sure that we're on both sides. To really enjoy that. You know, we'll probably do it that first night we're there, right? Because I feel like you're going to be like, especially if we're anywhere near where it's happening, she'll be like, Elliot. Because you did that when when we were there before, and Elliot was here. You're like, we have to wait till Elliot. We just have to wait till Elliot goes by. Now, now we have to wait till the end because it's exciting. It used to be Elliot, and okay, I don't really. The The good thing is, Elliot is closer to the end. So, yeah. But uh, the other thing, too, is, is they are sold out as of this recording, as I understand it, but I'm hoping that the buckets. The popcorn bucket and the sipper will come yeah. back in stock. I yeah, that's going to be interesting because that I I feel like they did it intentionally and smart where they're just kind of a trickling it trickle out. release instead of just all of them are gone instantly and then right. sorry about it. But yeah, so they keep saying summer. However, they've come back one or two times since the opening weekend. Yeah. So I think they're, I think it's a, a slower trickle. Cross my fingers. Same thing though with the right, the merch though, because the ears sold out that first weekend. Oh yeah. Weren't around, but they're back. So you can get the Main Street Electoral ears last I saw. Same thing with the lounge line, all that. So it seems like merch demands kind of leveled out with, de- you know, supply and demand there's kind of hit a good level. So we'll see. Because you order those from like, like a, like a place, right? Like you order the things from, it's not a shopping location. You order like the popcorn bucket and stuff like at like a vending yeah, cart or yeah, a yeah. restaurant. So you, you can either pick up the popcorn buckets at various popcorn stands and carts around the resort or where was it? Galactic Grill. Oh, sure. You could mobile order it. You could mobile order it from a Coke Corner. Okay. A couple different like physical brick and mortar stores too. Yeah. I was just looking quickly. Um because I was curious, like, if I went in right now, oh, what, what sure. would there be? So Galactic I, Grill, huh? You think is, Galactic is a good Grill spot? Galactic Grill is one of the places you could mobile order from, yeah. There, what was, so p- speaking of popcorn buckets, not related to our upcoming trip, but <laughs> they they came out, like, they brought back some buckets that, like, from from before. Like, I want to say they had some AT-ATs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Popcorn buckets that just, like, just resurfaced in the park like this last week those are cool well i mean perfect timing for star wars and all that right right yeah well we're gonna have a lot of fun hopefully we're gonna eat a lot of food as many of you as possible can come meet us uh meet us for our meetup on the mark twain if you can't make that and you do happen to see us bopping around the park feel free to come up and say hi yes please say hi see if we want to see what we're doing because we'd be totally up to ride an attraction or just at least stop and say hi. So yeah, don't feel like you can't can't come. You know, say hi. We we're, we're totally we we look forward to doing that. Yeah. I think I'm going to bring some pins. Yep. So we can do some pin hiding scavenger hunt you love that. stuff. It's so fun. So we can do some scavenger hunt stuff for weekly tears. So be sure to follow us on Instagram to get the clues for that. Also, just follow us on Instagram because we will be doing different stories, different yeah. posts, all sorts of fun of what we're doing in the parks while we're there. Um, for those Patreon supporters, we will be having separate, specific Patreon things that we will be sharing just for our Patreon supporters. Yeah. To find that, go to patreon.com, sign in. There's kind of like, basically you can do little videos. So it's kind yeah. of like Instagram stories, but it's just the Patreon version. So yeah. make sure you check that out. The one last thing that I was going to say is um, when it comes to meetups, Keep your eyes and ears open because we will be doing some sort of meetup. We have not discussed what, when, where, or how yet, but our next trip is will be out for D23. Oh, yeah. So we will be planning a D23 meetup as well. Um, we will try and give everyone plenty of time yeah. so that you're able to plan accordingly if, you, if you'd like to come hang out with us. Get reservations. Yeah. That. So once again, final reminder, Thursday, May 12th, 2022, 2 p.m., Mark Twain. Boom. Be there. 
Or be square. Or don't be there. So we will be back next week with more Disneyland news and information. Until then, we're going to go out and enjoy the parks. Oh, that's a good one. Please remain seated until the podcast comes to a complete stop and the doors have opened. Then collect your belongings, watch your head, and step carefully from the episode. On behalf of all of our crew, thanks for traveling with us. And we hope you have a happy and memorable visit here at DL Weekly.